What's up, movie buffs? Do you think you know everything there is to know about the weird and wonderful world of cinema? Well then, this is the video for you. Welcome to the Screen Rant Ultimate Movie Quiz. If you can get all 10 of these questions right, then you can consider yourself a serious movie buff. Keep your score as you go and then leave it in the comment section below. No lying, we will find you if you lie. Let's begin. Jared Leto stars as the Joker in Suicide Squad, but he wasn't the first actor that Warner Bros. sought out for the role. Do you know which leading man was the initial choice? Is it A, Matt Damon, B, Jim Carrey, or C, Ryan Gosling? If you answered C, you're off to a good start. Matt Damon has been heavily linked to being given a role in the DC Extended Movie Universe, especially since he's buddies with Batflick. And while Jim Carrey would make a very interesting version of the Joker, it was Ryan Gosling who was the first choice for the role. However, the star of The Notebook wasn't willing to sign on for the multi-picture deal that the studio wanted. The screenplay for 2016's remake of The BFG was written by the late Melissa Matheson, and the movie itself was directed by Steven Spielberg. But which movie had the pair collaborated on in this fashion before? Was it A, AI Artificial Intelligence, B, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, or C, E.T. the Extraterrestrial? See again. Prior to the BFG, the last movie to have its screenplay written by Melissa Matheson and be directed by Steven Spielberg was E.T. It was the highest grossing movie of 1982, and unfortunately it doesn't look like the BFG will come close to matching that success. Pretty much everyone knows that Heath Ledger won a posthumous Oscar for his portrayal of the Joker in The Dark Knight. But the film also earned numerous other nominations at the 81st Academy Awards. Do you know how many it was nominated for in total? A. 7 B. 8 C. 9 If you knew that the answer would be B. 8, you're killing this quiz so far. And if you picked up on that Star Wars reference I just made, give yourself a bonus point. The Dark Knight was actually nominated for a total of eight Academy Awards, making it the comic book movie with the highest number of nominations to date. It won for Best Sound Editing and Best Supporting Actor, and was also nominated for Best Sound Mixing, Best Art Direction, Best Cinematography, Best Makeup, Best Film Editing, and Best Visual Effects. The Avengers, like most other major movies, had a pre-production working title that enabled Marvel Studios to keep the project under wraps until they wanted the world to know about it. So what was that working title? Was it A, Group Hug, B, Come Together, C, Family Affair? The correct answer is A, Group Hug. Which coincidentally probably would have made a great way to end that movie. As revealed in an interview by Loki himself, Tom Hiddleston, prior to the movie's production and even in the early stages of filming, The Avengers was referred to as Group Hug. It would later be sent off to theaters under the name Team Building. After the title of the upcoming Rogue One A Star Wars Story was revealed, Lucasfilm were threatened with a potential lawsuit to change the name out of fear of audiences confusing it with which other movie? A. Rogue B. Operation Rogue C. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation The answer is C. Paramount got all riled up and made the threat relating to their 2015 movie Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, even though the movies were set for release more than a year apart. However, the two studios came to an agreement that Rogue One could keep its name on the condition that information about it wasn't released until after Rogue Nation had hit theaters. The music for Star Wars The Force Awakens was of course composed by the legendary John Williams. For J.J. Abrams, this marked the first occasion that a movie he directed wasn't being scored by a certain other composer, but who had provided the score for his other movies? Was it A. Michael Giacchino, B. Ludovico Inaudi, or C. J.J. Abrams himself? If you said B, you're wrong because the answer is A. American composer Michael Giacchino is the man who provided the music for every movie J.J. Abrams had directed up until The Force Awakens. These included Mission Impossible 3, Star Trek, and Super 8. The upcoming Harry Potter series spin-off Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them will be set predominantly in New York. However, it was filmed in England. So which former Royal Air Force base doubled as New York's docks during production? A. RAF Buckminster B. RAF Cardington C. RAF Carlisle The correct answer is B. That was a tough one. RAF Cardington will double as New York's docks in the J.K. Rowling penned production. Located in Bedfordshire, the base boasts a long and varied history, particularly in relation to airships and balloons. Chris Evans is always in great shape when he portrays Captain America, and he looked especially jacked in Captain America Civil War. 
But do you know how the filmmakers made him look even more muscular than he really was in the movie? A. CGI augmentation B. He wore t-shirts that were too small Or C. He was forced to pump iron seconds before filming every scene The correct answer is B. Like the douchebag at your local gym, Evans wore tiny t-shirts to make his muscles pop. Costume designer Judiana Makovsky has revealed that for all of his scenes in which he wore civilian clothing, the t-shirts he wore were purposely several sizes too small, which made it look as though his muscles were truly huge and bulging. A lot of Inside Out took place inside the main character Riley Anderson's mind. In her mind, there was a functioning TV studio called Dream Productions. In order to depict Dream Productions, the writers of Inside Out visited a member of the movie's cast on one of his TV shows to see how it all worked. Which cast member was it? A. Bill Hader B. Kyle MacLachlan C. Louis Black Survey says A. Bill Hader To see how a working TV studio operated, Inside Out's writers visited Bill Hader on the set of Saturday Night Live, which is located at Studio 8H on floors 8 and 9 of the Comcast building in New York City. Popular composer Hans Zimmer, who composed the score for DC movies Man of Steel, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, and the Dark Knight trilogy, has stepped down from composing movie scores in the superhero business. That means he will not be composing the score for Justice League. So who's stepping in? Is it A. John Williams, B. Junkie XL, or C. Danny Elfman? B. It'll be Junkie XL, the Dutch composer who assisted Hans Zimmer with the score for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. His other work includes Mad Max Fury Road and Deadpool. Thanks for watching and taking part in our first behind the scenes movie facts quiz. Did you enjoy this video? How well did you do with the questions? Leave your score in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fun videos like this one.